we let's start so we have been looking at flash adc right and in the last class we saw that a modern flash adc has a global sample and hold which is basically a switch and a capacitor and then you have a buffer which is almost always a source follower like this and then this goes to a whole bunch of comparators and uh, this we have 2 power n minus 1 such comparators giving 2 power n minus 1 thermometry codes to sum up and get the n bit binary flash n bit binary output right and we also saw the issues or non ideal non idealities in this comparators so we first looked at the offset we saw that offset is kind of random quantity so each comparator in flash will have a random offset so what is the impact of this random offset on the flash no no if the uh, if each comparator has random mismatch in the flash what happens no no see ideally you want star case characteristics like this so the step sizes change and this gives non linearity so we saw how to tackle them and the first thing is to actually go and size the comparators accordingly because we saw that the standard deviation of the offset is wl so to begin with you start with a reasonable size for your differential pair so that this sigma offset is small to start with and if you want to reduce it further we saw what to do we can have a preamplifier and you can have the latch here now if this has a gain of a if the latch has an offset bos what is the input referred offset it gets reduced by factor of a and we saw basically this uh, preamplifier is almost always a dynamic amplifier right and uh, after we add the preamplifier we have to correct for the offset of the preamp itself and that we told we'll do it by simply going and calibrating this it's any kind of amplifier right? we saw that it should be a dynamic amplifier else it will unnecessarily take static power i mean there is no you can you can use any amplifier in principle right so, but i mean it's not necessary that you always have to have a preamplifier you can as well directly put a latch here and the offset of this latch you can calibrate out but of course having a preamplifier helps you it helps it also helps us with meta stability remember meta stability is when the input difference is small enough that within the available time the comparator output has not reached a valid logic level so if you have a gain up front that will also help for okay and the yeah, one minor thing i want to just emphasize is that see if we have a latch like this in a differential case we apply the input as v in plus minus some v ref plus here the input is v in minus minus v ref minus so the same has to be applied to the preamp now and we also saw how to subtract this reference from the input in the last class we saw different techniques we can either subtract the reference in the voltage domain using a simple switch capacitor branch like this where you charge the capacitor to the reference or you can subtract the reference in the current domain by adding a parallel differential pair you can do anything so uh, this what you have to do is this so first you have to subtract the reference here let's say this is some vrf and vcm in the other phase you go and connect it to the preamplifier I'll consider the integrator type preamplifier we looked in the last class. So you also have the similar structure in the negative half. I'll not draw it. So the simplest preamplifier, which is dynamic, was this guy. So in which phase I'll activate the preamplifier? Phase one. So this also in phase one. and remember if i call this let us say uh, i don't know v1 v2 or something this v1 and v2 will then go to the latch this all over okay there is one uh, minor thing i want to discuss with this kind of preamp implementation it's cut that yeah yeah no when switch is one if i this clock is i what happens to the pmos it is the off right yeah 
Right. So let's look at it again. So here, let's say we apply VCM plus delta V by two. Here it's min VCM minus delta V by two, and let's say this is some phi and phi. So when uh, the clock phi is zero, what happens to the outputs? If I call it, uh, you know, uh, V V one and V two. When phi, both of them are pre-charged to VDD. Remember, there is always a parasitic capacitors here. They will be at VDD. And once phi is made high, what happens? What is the increment current here? In the left branch, what is the incremental current? I am applying GM delta V by two, and here it is the opposite. So both the both the voltages will drop, but V1 will drop faster than V2, right? And as we saw in the last class, if you wait sufficient time, you can get a difference. And we also saw, right? What is the differential output in this case? V1 minus V2. Okay. What is the differential current that uh, this guy is uh, pushing into the capacitor? This we have. Differential voltage is delta V. What is the differential current? GM delta V is a differential current. That current is being drawn out of the output capacitor. Let's say the output capacitor is C. The constant current GM delta V is being drawn out. This is delta V by two, single in that case. Yeah. So what what will be the output? It will get integrated. GM delta V is the current. This goes through a capacitor. So this is what you get. Okay. Yeah. But let us say I keep I let this happen continuously. What happens eventually? What will happen to the other one? Both of them will decrease, right? We are basically drawing currents from the output, right? So both of them will eventually go to zero. Is that correct? And anyway, remember that here in this branch, if I call it I one, I one is some bias current, let's say I not plus G M delta V by two. The other current is so. In both cases, we are drawing current from the output node. The output node will continuously drop. No, no, that's only in incremental. Right? If you look at the total current, this is the current. Total current is this. This current is being drawn out of both outputs. So you're being, you're drawing the current out of the output node. So output node will keep drawing in a linear fashion, and eventually it will go to zero. Is this good or bad? The output going to zero. Is it something you want? I mean, what is the point? I mean, this. this uh, what, what do you want this to function as, this guy? As an amplifier. If I look at the output here, what is the output? Is that what you want? No, right? So there is something problem. So you have to be careful because remember that this is going to a strong arm latch finally, or any latch for that matter. So until our latch makes the decision, the output should not go to zero, right? Should make sure that you design your uh, this dynamic amplifier in such a way that at least till the latch makes the decision, the outputs don't drop so much. Is that okay? And here, actually, if you see the differential output is something that you want. This is working perfectly. But what is not correct? No, but differentially, you see that the output difference is increasing. That is something. Differential behavior is something that we expect. What is not as you expect? That is okay. I mean, in principle, yeah, differential at least till here it's okay. But if you look at the common mode, that is the average of the two. If I plot the average here, let us say that is also dropping, right? This is basically average of roughly. And note that in any differential amplifier, you want the output common mode to be some constant VCM. And on top of this common mode, you want one output to rise, other to fall. But here, both of them are falling. Okay. So the common mode is also continuously falling along with the, I mean, with time. Okay. And this is a problem, especially if you use a strong arm latch, because if let us say you follow it up with a strong arm latch, this is the strong arm latch input pair. The V1 and V2 are connected here, and remember that we are connecting it to an NMOS, right? So to keep the transistor on, the gate voltage must be at least something, right? 
so you need you need to make sure that when you design this preamplifier the common mode doesn't fall so low that the strong arm itself doesn't turn on so till the latch makes a decision you have to make sure that the common mode at the output of the preamplifier is within a reasonable amount that's a design thing you have to do i mean yeah that depends right whatever the delay you have it so for the time it takes the strong arm latch for the time the strong arm latch takes to make the decision the output of the dynamic preamplifier must be such that the common mode at the output is within reasonable amount for the strong arm latch to work but uh, the other dynamic amplifier we looked at what is the other dynamic amplifier we briefly looked at you remember last saturday's discussion that the floating inverter structure so there actually you will not have this problem but actually let's quickly refresh that also i mean to refresh we started with started off with saying that we have a common source amplifier we apply the input here we told we didn't want the current in this transistor to be same all the time you want the maximum current here only at the beginning of the amplification phase because that is when the switch capacitor load demands maximum current so with time we want the source voltage to increase so what did we add here we added a capacitor and this capacitor must be initially charged to ground and then you have to connect it so i'll draw it in a slightly different way so in one phase you reset the capacitor like this and you also saw that in general to have an efficient amplification you use both nmos and pmos in parallel so we do the same thing for the pmos also and for the pmos we have the same biasing structure so the capacitor must be charged to which voltage for the pmos it should be initially charged to vdd and then connected so again i'll slightly re uh, redraw this so i'll say you charge it to vdd then go and connect it like this and the input is applied to both nmos and pmos and similarly if you want a differential case you have one more half So let's say it out here. And then you do the same business here. But I just hand wavingly told that if you want to have a good common mode rejection, you basically combine the two capacitors into a single capacitor. And then share the same capacitor between the two halves. Again, this is taking inspiration from the general differential amplifier where you have a tail current source shared between the two halves. So, which means this simply reduces to this. So, this was a simple floating inverter structure we saw. So, actually, here if you look at it, this will have a good common mode rejection. That is, let us say I apply a common mode input. That is. along with the common uh, the dc bias you apply the increment is common mode both the inputs are increased or decreased at the same time so let's see what happens in the amplification phase in amplification phase phi1 is off phi2 is on right so let us say here the current is am i1 so what will happen to this current here when it reaches this node it will split it will split equally or not equally equally because you see both are identical the inputs you apply to the gates are also identical so it will just split equally as i1 by 2 i1 by 2 let's even assume that we have a load capacitor here okay now uh, if this current is i1 what can you say about this current that is also i1 so then what is this current So now you see I1 by 2 is being pushed out, I1 by 2 is being drawn out. What is the current flowing out into the output node? Zero. So no, no current is basically pushed or pulled out of the output node. So what can you say about the output voltage? It will be constant. It will not change, right? So this is something you want, right? You see that if the input is changing in a common mode fashion, the output doesn't change. It doesn't respond to any common mode disturbances at the input, right? and because of this what we usually do is this right so you take the same guy 
in phase one when the amplifier i mean when the capacitor is getting charged you reset the output to the required common mode you want so now you see that in one phase the output common mode is set to vcm in the second phase even if there is a common mode change the output common mode will remain the same okay but if there is a differential uh, input that depends i mean i not going to lot of details you can check out it, it depends on the load capacitor also right so so let's say we look at a differential case wherein we apply the delta v by 2 and minus delta v by 2 again i'll take only amplification case so this switch is closed and let's say we have a load cap so again uh, this current here is i1 this is also i1 but will this current split equally in these two branches no so if the increment incremental gate voltage is delta v by 2 what can you say about the incremental current in the pmos gm delta v by 2 and this incremental current will flow from source to drain or from drain to source gm delta v i mean gm vgs is the current is the current from drain to source or from source to drain from drain to source gm vgs is from drain to source okay so uh, current in this direction is gm vg uh, gm delta v by 2 so in this direction minus gm delta v by 2 and remember on top of it you also have so what can you say about the current in this direction incremental current drain to source is gm delta v by 2 so this is again the dc plus gm delta v by 2 so now you see that current in this direction is this current in this direction is this what is the current pushed into the output node yeah difference between these two what is that minus gm delta v okay so here the current is minus gm delta v so let's say and if you work out the same thing here you will have what i1 by 2 it's just opposite right plus gm delta v by 2 sorry so plus gm delta v by 2 this is i1 by 2 minus gm delta v by 2 so here the current being pushed is minus gm delta v what is the current pushed here plus gm delta v right so here you see that one voltage reduces the other increases so only if you have a differential excitation the outputs will respond that is exactly what you want okay so in phase 1 the output is reset to vcm in phase 2 the moment you have a differential excitation one in it one input will basically increase other will fall and the common mode will still be the same this is an ideal case that something you want so in this floating inverter structure you don't have this common mode issue but if you were to use the uh, integrated type dynamic amplifier you have this because here both the outputs fall continuously along and so the common mode also drops but of course you can do other things to uh, set the common mode right but i'm not going into that but the point i'm getting at is i mean if you use dynamic amplifiers there are other things you have to be careful about that's all great